I have a fairly simple one this week, the mixed curve. Using the sketch workbench, we can draw pretty much any curve we want on a plane. Using attachment and position, we can place that plane arbitrarily in the three-dimensional space. But what do we do when we need a well-constrained curve that simply will not fit on a plane? The mixed curve tool from the curves workbench comes to the rescue. The best way to explain the Mixed Curve tool is to show it to you in action. A quick reminder first, I will be using a custom toolbar to bring in tools from other workbenches to make this easier. Follow the link in the upper right if you want to see how to set that up. You'll need the Lattice 2 workbench and the Curves workbench if you want to follow along. I'm going to design a very simplified compressor. Not necessarily a good compressor, but this is about the mixed curve, not complex blade geometry. I'll leave out most of the niceties and go straight to the blade. To get started, we need a base. So sketch a circle on the XY plane and give it a radius of 50 millimeters. Close the sketch and extrude it to negative 2 millimeters so that when we do the blades, they'll sit neatly on the origin. That's not strictly necessary in this case, but we might as well. Now for a profile for the compressor blade. Create a sketch on the disc and attach it to the plane face. Start with a line on the x-axis going through the origin. Make it symmetrical across the origin and set its length to 1 millimeter. It's a little hard to see, but with zoom it'll be fine. Now bring in the circumference of the disk as external geometry. To begin creating the blade, use an arc in three points. Start with the point to the left of the origin, bring it out to the circumference and give it a gentle curve. Now do the same for the point to the right of the origin. There's no need to be precise here. We're going to add some constraints to neaten it up. Zoom in on the origin and select the horizontal line and the arc to the right. Set them perpendicular. Repeat this for the arc to the left. Not a bad start, but this is obviously not what we want. Note how by manipulating the center of the arcs, I can straighten them up quite nicely. In fact, constrain the centers of the two arcs to be coincident, and now we have a fairly nicely defined blade profile. It's still open at the circumference, though. In order to close it, use the arc tool specifying the center and two endpoints. The center will be, of course, the origin, and the endpoints will be at the ends of the arcs at the circumference. This gives us our closed profile, so close the sketch. In order to turn this into a compressor blade, I want to sweep it along an upward arc. Since the ends of the blade profile do not line up on one of the cardinal planes, select the end cap of the blade profile. You may need to zoom in quite close to select it. Create the sketch, and for the attachment mode, select Frenet Tangent to both. As we can see, that was the correct choice. Sometimes it's hard to know which mode you actually need. The best way to figure it out is to just pick one of them, and if it's not right, close the sketch and change the attachment mode in the data pane. I won't need to bring in any external geometry here since the attachment mode itself has placed the origin of the sketch exactly where we need it. Create an arc in three points. Put one of the endpoints at the origin. Bring the other point up and to the left and set the curvature to approximately 90 degrees of arc. To get the other end of the arc where it's needed, create a construction line from the end of the arc and attach the other end to the x-axis. Allow it to auto-constrain to a point on the line and to be vertical. Set the arc to be perpendicular to the x-axis. 
The blade should be 30 millimeters high, so set the length of the construction line to 30 millimeters. Zooming out, we can see if that looks about right. So close the sketch. I've seen a number of tutorials on YouTube using this technique, and many of them share a common problem. The arc we just created is planar to the end of the blade, but if we simply sweep the blade profile along that arc, the blades are going to protrude outside of the base. That doesn't just look ugly, it risks having it not fit in the housing. To illustrate, I'll go ahead and create the sweep. Select Sketch 1 as the profile, and for the sweep path, select the arc we just created. Check Create Solid and OK it. Going to the top view, you can see that the upper corner of the blade protrudes outside of the base. Create a polar array from the Lattice 2 workbench. Set zero radius and a count of 12. Now select the sweep and the polar array and populate the array. Open the populated array and hide away the original sweep. Moving around a bit, you can see that we've got kind of an ugly compressor that's going to leave gaps once we put a housing around it. What we really want is for the sweep path to have a curve both along the plane of the sketch and the plane normal to that sketch that the base is on. I'll get rid of the populated array and the sweep so I can fix it. Select the face of the base and create a new sketch on the plane face. Bring in the arc from the last sketch as external geometry. Just to make things easy, create a construction line from the tip of that arc to the origin. You'll see why this is needed in a moment. Now create an arc from the origin, one end point of the sweep path and the other end point along the construction line. Essentially, it's just the segment of the circumference of the base that's covered by the sweep path. Now zoom in and carefully select both of the arcs in the Mixed Curve tool from the Curves Workbench. This has taken our two arcs on planes and made them into a single curve in three dimensions. Now redo the sweep using the mixed curve as the sweep path. Check create a solid as usual. And you can see that now we get a much neater looking blade that fits perfectly within the circumference of the base. Select the sweep and the polar array and populate the array with the sweep. Again open up the populated array and hide the original sweep away. As you can see, we get a much neater looking compressor. A quick end note, the key to getting a good mixed curve is to make sure that the two curves are on perpendicular planes and that the endpoints of both curves line up. It should be noted that while this is a good example overall, the topological naming problem will almost inevitably bite you in Sketch 03. Hopefully that will go away soon. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.